if you follow this coaching, then you're going to be able to manifest what you want and what you desire a lot more easily. Now, the first thing to do is dispense of the idea that the law of attraction is a vending machine. Now, a lot of people think, well, I can just put up my wish, post a picture on the wall, and out comes this um, desire that I have. And that they can completely disregard how the law of attraction actually works. Now, when we consider the fact of the matter is that our reality, so look around you, everything that's in your life right now, everything that's happening, you manifest it by your thoughts. Now, if we can't accept that, then there's no chance of manifesting anything that matters because you, when we ignore the rules and say, but we're going to manifest anyways, but we're going to make up our own rules, it's kind of like telling gravity to work in reverse. So, for example, there's 24 life ingredients. And if you don't know what they are and if you don't know how to use them, then you have no control over your life at all. It's just once in a while somebody turns on the light switch and you go, oh, that's where I am. And then the light goes out again and then people are stuck and they're wondering why things aren't working out. But how come it works out for them and how come it's not working out for me? And all this kind of thing. And it's because they don't understand the rules of the game. They don't understand even the game that they're playing. And yet they wonder why they're losing at it. So what we're going to do now in the next few minutes is break down some of the things that you're successfully manifesting so that you can see the pattern. So then you can see, okay, if, that, if I'm manifesting this now, then how can I manifest something else that I desire? So let's start with a very simple example. What time did you get up this morning? And why did you get up then? So the reason I'm asking you that question is you manifested the time you got up by your thoughts. So if you got up, let's say, um, I'd like to take this away from the, the, the routine force of something like uh, going to work. But let's take a time when you have a choice of when you're going to get up and then you decide to sleep in or you decide to get up early. And what are the thoughts that went into what time you woke up? Now, if you decided that you were going to be up early for something, so you're going to go for a jog or you're going to for a walk or a hike or you're going to do something exciting or it's Christmas morning or who knows what, that's one thing. Or you decide to sleep in because you just don't feel like getting up. You're just not inspired to live life. So, or you're just inspired to, um, that you, you want some extra rest. So and when we break this all down, when we look closely at this, here we've got a perfect example because we know that we woke up when we planned to wake up. And even when we say, well, no, I slept much longer than I thought I was going to, that's a perfect example to show why um, you're finding manifesting anything to be so difficult. Because what's happening there when we're saying, well, no, I planned to get up much earlier, but I slept longer. What's happened there is we had the conscious desire of getting up at a specific time, but was so quickly overruled by our subconscious that we didn't even realize what was going on. And this is, this is the biggest problem behind when people are trying to manifest something, is that they think that their conscious desires are going to overrule their subconscious, which is the controlling factor in their life. It's, it's our subconscious that's on autopilot that's actually producing the results of our physical reality. So our subconscious on autopilot is our spiritual reality, our reality of thoughts, thinking, feelings, conscious, subconscious, uh, feelings, all manifesting into our physical reality. So when our subconscious thought, well, no, we're going to sleep till we're rested, then that became our physical reality. So how do we trigger our subconscious to create the outcomes of the things that we desire? And that's why we're going through this exercise, because once we understand that, okay, we've manifested what time we're getting up, and we know how we manifested that, and we can practice that. We can do that over and over and over every day, practice that over and again, and see what the results are. I want to wake up at 6.57.49 a.m. to the second, and you look at your well, you watch your phone and you say, bang on that second, you're waking up. Well, if you can manifest that, you can manifest anything once you use the same thought process. So when you, when you get stuck trying to manifest something, anything, then 
you can refer back to your own notes about what you're doing about how you're waking up. What did you think before you went to sleep? What did you do to wake up at that time in the state of mind that you woke up in? You see, you can say that I'm going to wake up at 4.30 4 um, in the morning and I'm going to be exhausted, but I'm going to be, I'm getting up. Or you can say, I'm going to wake up at 4.30 and I'm going to feel energetic and alive and I'm going to have energy for the whole day. And so try these things out because this is manifesting for real. This isn't some um, bogus, well, you can do this and win the lottery. This is how you manifest in your life to create real results. So when you get stuck trying to manifest anything else, then what happens is now you can say, okay, well, let's see now. Um, it didn't take a lot of thought for me to wake up at that time uh, with this kind of energy. So why, when I'm trying to manifest anything else, why would I put a lot of thought or energy into that? Because I already know that I only need this level of thought and this level of energy going into that. And I need this kind of positive thought and that kind of negative thought about not getting up and it didn't even exist. So why am I bringing, when I'm trying to manifest a job, money, a relationship, anything, why am I bringing other thoughts into it? Because when I refer back to my notes from how I use my sleep manifestation uh, exercise, it's a very simple exercise. I don't put a lot of thought into it. I just know that um, I'm going to be getting up at, at a particular time and then I, I wake up at that time. Now, once we've got, so we've got there the, the bare bones, we've got the basics of how this is working. And then well, from there, let's elaborate a little more, let's, because there's more to it than just the, um, the conscious thought of, I want to do this. There's our why. So now you've all heard about, well, you've got to have a why and find your why, and then it solves all your life problems. Well, that's all great and wonderful, but that's kind of like saying that when you're at the middle of the bridge, then you just continue walking and you get to the end of the bridge. That's all great and wonderful, but how do we even get onto the bridge? And that's, that's what is, how do I find my why? And so to find your why, this is part of the natural thought process, one of the 24 life ingredients that most people have forgotten about. We're all born with them, but people forget about these things because the way society uh, trains us to think a certain way. So in the natural thought process, we're, the first thing we're doing is we're observing things. And so as we observe life around us, as we observe old things in new ways, as we observe with all of our senses, then we observe things and outside of us and we're observing how we feel about what we see. So as we observe uh, something and we say, well, we're negatively inspired by that, then we use those negative inspirations as the curbs on a roadway. They, they guide us to where we're going. But if we crash into those curbs, well, we're going to bend our rims and we're going to be completely out of shape and we're going to be all frustrated for nothing. The, the negative inspirations, the negative things we see in our life are to guide us towards the positive things that we desire. So let's say that we um, had recently problems in a relationship and we want um, a, a, a better relationship. Well, do we focus our thoughts on what's gone wrong or do we focus our thoughts so that we get the feelings of what it's like to be in a, in a loving relationship, the feelings of w what it's like to spend time with, with uh, a person or people that we love, or to spend time or to, to do things that make us feel good. So if we're wanting to do things, which is the, the natural human condition, is to always look for something that feels better, then what do we do to guide us to that? Well, naturally, that's the whole point of why we have feelings. So if we're looking for something that feels better, then we need to rely on our feelings as, is this feeling better? Is this feeling worse? And if it's feeling worse, well, those are the curbs on the roadway and we're going to move away from them. And if it's feeling better, then we're going to move towards that. So if we like the feeling of, um, you know, I think about uh, going out to dinner or I think about having a nice uh, dinner at home with, with my wife or with family, or if I uh, think about um, conversations and the type of things I enjoy, and I enjoy that feeling, so I, I move towards that. But that doesn't mean I have to write a book on it. It doesn't mean I have to, to post all kinds of stuff all over my walls or anything like that. All I have to know is I enjoy that feeling. 
and when I observe things, so when I observe, like as I uh, drive down a road or walk somewhere, and I see a restaurant, and I have a feeling of that's I enjoy that because it brings good feelings of uh, time with family. And anything I observe that brings up negative feelings, I recognize those, and then I move towards what's the what's the good feeling thought that's related to the negative because everything has an opposite. So if we keep moving towards the positive, then we're um, constantly improving what our vibration is. And this is what, we're, we're not alone in the world. The universe is in, in, in a, a complete balance. And so when we're feeling something, then the universe knows what to deliver to us. For example, like when you started looking for a particular type of car, all of a sudden you noticed a lot more of those cars around. But when you weren't looking at cars at all, then you did, they never even showed up on your radar. So the same thing happens with absolutely everything in life. And the reason that it happens is that as our feelings are in alignment with, with certain things, those vibrations, then the universe knows what to put in front of us. What to, to So we'll see more and more of what it is that we're in alignment with. So on the negative side of this, to show you how that it works all the way through the whole scale, all the way from suicide, all the way to the most ecstatic happiness, um, is that when people are feeling uh, negative, when people are feeling um, uh, suicidal, well, uh, they, see, they see more and more and more reasons and things that are related to that. And it's because they feel that that's going to be better than what they have. It's always that search for better. And so as we search for what truly feels better, what's positively better, that's what the universe lines up. So to, to learn more about this, do the self-test at mylifesoup.com and then take advantage of the 20 minutes of free life coaching that comes along with that. And for those of you who are ready to, to move on and actually make some big changes in your life over the next year, well, you can start with three months of, co of coaching or you can start with six months. And for those of you that are interested in becoming life coaches that have these kind of skills, that understand the 24 life ingredients through and through, then you might be interested in our Earn While You Learn coach training experience. Until then, I'm John Verway, and I look forward to meeting you.